and we do have a quorum. Our membership is now at 11, which means we need six for quorum, but we do have a quorum and have met that tonight. So with that, I'll ask if there are any um, announcements, uh, anything anybody would like to add or say um, tonight. Any, any announcements from other organizations that we may be, or committees that we may be interested in hearing? Sally. Um, I don't know if you're all going to be interested, but tomorrow night is the annual meeting of the Friends of the Library, which is a presentation from Dolores Johnson, who will be talking about her memoir, Say I'm Dead. Um, you can sign up on the Friends of the J.V. Fletcher Library website, too. And it's virtual. Excellent. So you can watch from home in your PJs. Okay. Thank you, Sally. And before I forget... Is there anyone taking minutes tonight? I was just going to say, before I forget, Dana has graciously agreed, <laughs> twisting the arm, um, to take minutes. So we'll end up rotating, but Dana will be taking them for tonight. So while we've got open forum, I'll put a plug in for the Civic Social for the League Women Voters on Thursday night. And the top is, topic will be the redistricting um, effort that's going on in town. So Patty Doobie will be joining Elisa, the, the I forgot Lisa's last name, but um, the, one of the registrars, and I think there's someone else who'll be joining that meeting. So um, that should be interesting. Anybody else? Val. It back. says your default microphone. Um, I've heard that the select board is gonna start talking at their next meeting about whether to push the annual town meeting from March. I don't know if you already said that. No, I did not. Did not. Angela, is there any update that you'd like to speak to at this point? Or can you guys hear me? Uh, now I can. Oh, you can hear me? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was having trouble with my sound. So yes, yeah, so I actually would like to discuss that if we can um, tonight. Now it seems like I'm having trouble with video, but um, yeah, I would like to. There it goes. Okay. They're, they're asking me um, to render at least my opinion on whether or not we should move the um, March town meeting out for a couple of reasons. One is um, the obvious COVID. If we're still in COVID, we really probably don't want to be meeting inside and we can't really meet outside in March. And then there are the reasons that have been sort of floating around for the last couple of years that it's hard to do the budget. And now they've got the, the um, ARPA money too. So that's going to make it even harder. So that is coming up at the next meeting. And I really would love if we could take a minute um, for to get your comments on that um, and what you guys think about that. Because it's a hard decision and I, I'm not... I'm really not decided on what my opinion is yet. And what do you guys think? Tom? Yeah, just from a, uh, you know, a lot of people in my age group, and I won't tell you what that is, um, <laughs> go away for the winter. So uh, I personally think moving it from March to, I don't know, whatever, uh, June, like we had it this year, uh, at least for the senior contingent, makes a lot of sense. That this would be temporary, not a permanent move oh, okay. because of COVID. But um, what do other folks think? My only my only question, Angela, is is uh, it, it's November. We have to, they need your opinion now. I mean, yeah, because if it's going to be in March, they have to open the warrant at their next meeting after that. Okay, I haven't looked at the timeline. Okay, yeah. Christina. Hi, um. So I, I'm sort of conflicted because from a town government perspective, pushing it out is definitely better. Budgets are a little bit easier. There's not the crunch to try to predict, you know, eight, nine, 10 months into the future. Um, but it, when you get into May and June, the weather's nice. There's a lot more stuff going on. I think for our committee to try to get people there, you know, we'll all be there, of course, but I, I think you're fighting with with other competing interests. So I, I, I'm torn. Val? Yeah, I, I mean, I 
can certainly um, echo some of Christina's argument um, points because the budgeting on a school side is definitely benefited last year from sort of the delays. Um, but I think March is kind of a sweet spot as far as a parent of younger kids. You know, it's kind of in between sports seasons and there's not a whole lot of other stuff happening on the weekends. When you get into May and June, it's like recitals and graduations and I don't know, stuff like that that makes it harder. Sally? Um, when, if we're changing it, I find it easier to know months in advance. So I guess nobody can really predict the future, but if, if they feel like it's likely COVID still going to be an issue where we don't want to be inside or where we can't be inside with the volume of people that we need, I'd rather have it changed now so that people can have a lot of advance notice this year instead of, um, you know, the change for the the fall one happened very late and it was hard to, for people to switch schedules. So I can see the wisdom in changing it just for this year, making the decision now, if it seems likely that it will need to change, which I, I feel like it probably is not going to be inside in March. Um, just looking at how COVID is going, but I don't know, that's luckily not my decision, but I can see why they're discussing it. But Angela, are we, are we limited to, so if we conceptually agree, or I, what I'm hearing is we conceptually agree March isn't great, are we then, it, it, is the solution only June or, no. right? No, no to, I think what Jody is suggesting is pushing it out to a time when we can have an outdoor meeting, which really means May at the earliest. Right. I, don't, I don't think we can have an outdoor meeting in April, it could snow. <laughs> So I think it's at least May um, and possibly June. But are there other people who have, I, I just feel like this is such a good group for me to talk to about this because you're so, so thinking about what's best for people attending. I mean, my, my feeling is if we need to do it outside the June, probably the best time to be doing it, even though it, it does, there are, there are more activities going on with everyone. Eric, I'm just calling people out randomly. <laughs> oh, no problem. Yeah, um, I, I was about to raise my hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my thought is that uh, later is better as well, um, just from the perspective of traveling there. I mean, even, you know, indoors or outdoors, if uh, March has a much higher probability of a snowstorm than, than May or June, obviously. So the weather outside is, is often, often a factor, even if it's not actively snowing that day, if, if there's a lot of snow on the ground, and certainly people with uh, ambulatory issues just try not to move around a lot when ice or snow might be an issue. So I, I, I think later on in the year as a long-term solution may be better. Dana, catching everybody off guard here. Um, I, I, I guess I'm in the torn camp as well, because I agree that there isn't as many weekend activities going on in March as there would be in May or June. Um, I guess I don't know if this is appropriate for this discussion now, but my question would be if we push it out to May or June, or is it also absolutely going to be on a weekend? Good point. Yeah. Linda? I turned the TV off. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, from a, you know, I, I, I'm torn as well. I mean, you know, traditionally it's March. It's always been, well, February or March. And, um, but to have it outside, I don't see how you can possibly do anything earlier than like the, the end of May. And then you run into Memorial Day or um, the second week in June after graduation. So, you know, um, but in a COVID situation like this, I think I think that's what we need to do, is is to go ahead and 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 make those adjustments and make them now. Steve, I think you're last. I mean, from where I sit, I've I've covered both the the uh, May meetings and the March meetings, and I I like the May meetings better. 
Uh, I don't have necessarily all of the other considerations that people have brought up just from where I sit. I think May is easier and makes a little more sense. And I, I actually kind of like being outside for town meeting. Um, I think it's just a nicer atmosphere than being under the lights in Abbott gym. Well, again, it's a, whatever we do is a temporary solution until there's some permanent decision. I mean, what I said to Jody today was the only information we have right now that came from the community is that March is a better time because the last time we discussed this as a community, that was the decision that was made. So if we change it, it'll just be temporary. And I guess from my point of view, the justification would be the COVID um, possibility because I, I, I wouldn't want to um, change the community decision that's already been made, except in an emergency, which is what this is. I mean, and basically dealing with COVID is an emergency. But also, interestingly, listening to this discussion, I think that it's, a, it's an issue that this committee is um, probably going to be talking about because on a permanent basis, we need to decide what's best for the most people to be able to come, whether that's March or June, Saturday or evenings. I mean, I think that's, that's part of what we have to decide. That's, that's probably a big, a big factor in terms of how many people we get to the meetings. But I really appreciate your giving me that input because it, it, it's, it's important and um, yeah. So if anybody is going to be there, it's going to be discussed uh, next t Tuesday at the select board meeting. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is approving the uh, October 19th minutes that uh, Megan had uh, put together. Did people get a chance to look at them? Any comments, any input? Feel free. <laughs> I'm also going to send, when I put the agenda out in the future, I'm probably going to send it to one of you for another set of eyes because I duplicated some information and, and put a wrong date on there on top of it. So next time, I'll have someone else look at, look at the uh, agenda. In any event, for the October 19th minutes, um, someone on make a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You can all just raise our hand. Thank you. Um, for this, I'm not going to read off for the minutes. I don't think I'm going to read off everybody's name, but I think uh, we'll simply say the minutes were, were approved. The majority uh, approved the minutes. Okay. Okay. So the next thing on the agenda was to confirm uh, and, and talk about some planned dates or to make recommendations to the select board. Uh, I know at one of the last meetings, maybe one of the first meetings, uh, Angela, we talked about when, yes, no, it would be really helpful to have some marching orders here uh, as to what we're marching toward. Um, so can we talk about that for a minute on, on what, what your thoughts are, what the teams, what the committee's thought process is? I, I, um, I guess I feel like, I, I, I think it could be a rolling thing where the easy stuff comes first. I, I think the select board um, is appreciative when committees come before them and report what's going on. And if there are bigger things, then they're going to take a longer period of time. I guess that, is that not what you're asking me, Diane? Because I, yeah, I think I think they would just be help. I, I'm, you know, my process is fairly structured. I think as as most of you know. But in any event, it would be nice to say, let's march toward or let, let one of our goals be to go before the select board on March fifth. April 28th, something along those lines with our recommendations. And the recommendations can be short term or long term, but at least we, we've got some direction uh, and specifics that we're going to go and, and at least have some dates that we're all working toward. That, that was kind of the thought process.
I think you guys can decide that yourselves, what, what, what you think your timeline is going to be. Well, the, the reason I didn't know whether or not we were going to go, we would, anything would need to be done at town meeting regarding what we're suggesting. So that, that was the logic, you know, well, in order to implement this for town, for town meeting, we would need to do X by February 5th in order to, so that was kind of my, my train of thought. Others have any comments? Sally. It's hard not knowing when the meeting is going to be, but assuming we have a May meeting, which probably seems like it'll be somewhere between March and June, um, I would think by the beginning of February, we should present any ideas we have to be implemented at the, the May or whenever town meeting, this coming year's town meeting, so that there'd be a chance to implement them. I would think that would be the latest we could present them. I, I'm not sure what their timeline is, especially if there's a anything with a cost, would we need to get that approved at the town meeting for the next town meeting? I'm not sure if they're, you know, how cost would work. All right, Christina. So as far as cost, I mean, depending on how much, it would either have to be worked into the budget or possibly we could go to FinCom or something like that. So I think it depends on the amount. So, so clearly something like offering um, childcare, uh, un unless, unless the rec department provides it, and maybe, e maybe even if the rec department provides it, we would need funding to do something like that. So um, uh, we might, I guess it, yeah, it would depend on how that's structured, right? Steve, did you just raise your hand or no? No. Any any other thoughts? I mean, we'll make recommendations by by a certain date, and I guess the question is, we we have a survey, so are we? We will finalize the survey, get input. Are we are we saying that we actually want to want to implement the survey? before going to the select board or are these just a list of recommendations? And, and that's where the, that's where I just need some clarity. <laughs> yeah, Christina. I would assume that we should go to the select board with a list of recommendations first before trying to implement Actually anything. Implement. Um, you know, maybe we speak to the rec department and get some background from them, if they can support it, you know, kind of get all our ducks in a row. But I, I don't, I don't see us implementing anything besides, you know, the welcome table we did with some candy <laughs> um, before we go to, before we go to um, the select board. Okay, so following that 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 uh, train of thought, uh, we'll have a list of recommendations. Some will obviously, as Angel said, be sh be you know short term. It wouldn't take much to implement or it's a given, or we would do it two weeks before whenever that, that town meeting date is, some would be a little more, uh, a little more complicated, right? So, so we're back to what do we think about what date we would wanna go before the select board. If we're meeting once a month, um, are the teams comfortable with working on their own so that we we only meet once a month and review what you guys have done. So that's one question I would have. And then something like February, you know, um, present at select board and and rate and put a uh, duration next to all our um, recommendations. You know, the, the zero weeks to three weeks and whatever that period of time would be. To, to answer the short-term versus long-term enrolling. That certainly makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, at least for me, I'm, I'm having a hard time um, feeling, like, committed to a certain date to report out because I just don't know how long some of this might take to play out. Um, but I think February, as kind of our 
next official check-in with the select board and, and report out does certainly make sense. It's just, it's hard to think of what would be wrapped up. Will everything, you know, it's just hard to commit to something, you know, but I, I certainly think a check-in at that point or whatever we have to share at that point would make sense. Okay. Eric. Yes, I the, uh, the question that I had is, um, is our, is our audience for this first step that we're, you know, kind of pointing to February for, is it uh, greater than the select board or is it simply a presentation to the select board? Cause I just, um, and, and maybe Angela can answer this question. Is there any body other than the select board that just deals with these are the logistics of the upcoming town meeting? I think we, I think uh, whatever recommendations we make, um, anyone who is directly responsible for the logistics of just setting up how town meeting, the next town meeting happens should hear them kind of firsthand. So, so for that, log sorry, Eric, I didn't mean to oh, go ahead. I, I think I was done. Go ahead. So, so for logistics, it's really, um, the town clerk and, um, the, the, you know, the custodial people who basically just do whatever needs to be done to to set things up. And if if we're gonna, so you're you're right. Like if we were gonna do something like get more comfortable chairs, that would definitely be something that, in addition to funding, we would have to have the custodial staff deal with that. Where are they going to be stored? How are they going to get out there? Who's going to put them out and take them in? Are they easy enough to handle? So, so there are other audiences, but I, I, I sort of agree with Valerie. It's hard to figure out who your audience is or when you're going to be able to present to them this early on. I, I think that'll become clearer as we move forward with different ideas. And it may be February, it may not, it may, but but it's good to have that goal. And the other big audience is the community. Right. I'm sure that some of what comes up here is gonna involve an education process to the community at large. So they'll probably be one of the more important audi audiences for some of, of what what comes out of this committee. And, and I definitely would agree with that, Angela, but I see the, I see the community as the, um, I see the first step as the list of recommendations, right? In the simple recommendation, for example, we, we recommend implementing a survey or conducting a survey to the community. And for, for example, if that's what we agree as we're moving forward, and that, that would be one of the items on that presentation to the select board. Mm -hmm. Implementing it and all the logistics associated with that and tallying it and analyzing it uh, comes after. But the first list, the first identification, I would think would be just identifying and recommending that we do that. No, yes, someone else jump in? Valerie. Sorry, do you mean that like we, so the, this, the survey that my group worked on and then the other town survey wouldn't go out until the select board sees it? That, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm trying to get at. Are we simply okay. making the recommendation or not? That's why we're having this discussion. I, I guess I assumed that w that we were tasked with kind of getting that information and doing that work and putting the survey out as part of that. So I didn't interpret that as needing their official approval to me angela is kind of the only other person i would think to check in with yes angela you're muted angela <laughs> you're muted a charge that you have i think allows you to do certain things some of which, a big part of which is gathering information, and that's what the surveys are about. The surveys are going to yield information that will then result in recommendations that go to the select board or that might require funding or that might need to have custodial input or input from Patty Doobie or somebody like that. But certainly the gathering of information is not anything we, I think that's in our chart, in your charge. It's not something we need to ask for additional permission for. Okay. Okay, so let's, so what I'm hearing at least is let's, let's aim for a February select board presentation. 
and at a minimum, we'll provide uh, whatever updates we have at that point. Does that sound reasonable to everybody? Yes. You know, uh, yes. that's about as much as we know right now. So we'll look at the calendar, second Tuesday, fourth Tuesday, one of those Tuesdays, um, and we'll present uh, to the select board where we are at that point and how much progress we've made and maybe associate a, um, a duration with, with those things that could be done very quickly and other things that may take a longer period of time. Make sense? Nod? <laughs> if not, speak up. Speak up here. Okay, we good? Angela, you good on that? Okay, so aim, we're, we're, our aim is, is mid-February, one of the select board meetings for a presentation of our progress to date. Good, okay. Okay, Megan is not with us, uh, was not able to join us uh, today tonight uh, and we'll have some updates from our working groups. So Tom, you want to kick off the remote participation working group? Sure. <clears throat> um, yeah, I was going to start off and, and you've already done that. Uh, just letting the group know that due to other commitments, uh, Kathy has, has resigned from both the ATM and the um, remote petition uh, remote uh, participation group. Um, now I think in, we've only had one meeting, but in the very short time that Kathy was with this group, uh, she came up with several good ideas. Uh, she was active in the meeting, and she did some research and sent me some, you know, some research on other towns. So uh, I think she, uh, her presence will be missed on on both the ATM and the working group. So we're down to three members, uh, Eric, Steve, and myself. Uh, we actually have a, a, our second meeting scheduled for uh, uh, Thursday, night, Thursday at seven. Thursday yep. at seven. Um, and uh, we'll go through some of the ideas that we've each uh, worked on during the past month. Steve set up a, uh, a Google Docs document, and um, I haven't talked to, to Steve about it, uh, I did try to put a couple of things in to try it out. I've never used Google Docs, and I'm not even sure everything went through. Uh, I can go back. I can go back in on my end and see the two paragraphs that I put in. But and I hit the share button. I'm not sure that it went anywhere. Uh, so I'm not sure that uh, either Steve or Eric has has seen that. But we can talk about that on Thursday night. Uh, I think it's a great idea as you come up with with thoughts between meetings. You just type up a paragraph and put it into Google Docs and uh, let the other members think about what your, what your idea is. So let's see. Um, basically, in the first meeting, and I think Diane sent out the minutes that Eric wrote up from that first meeting, but just basically we talked about general goals, uh, uh, those being electronic access to town meetings, uh, electronic voting methods, uh, post or, and I'll add pre-meeting uh, ballots for voting. Uh, I know some towns actually send out ballots uh, for their residents uh, to vote on and send them in before the meeting. Um, and one town uh, that I have found at least has information meetings in January and January and February, one each month. And then they have their town meeting in March and you have to get your ballot in by the town meeting. Other towns, I think you have up until a week after town meeting to, to get ballots in. Uh, we, we haven't put all that information together yet, but that's what we're finding. Interesting. We're working on uh, determining what laws, practices and procedures would need to change uh, if we were to recommend a change to the way we vote at town meeting, uh, be it electronic or, or whatever. Uh, the town of Lexington uh, is a very good uh, example. In June uh, of 2020, uh, they had the first ever in the state virtual town meeting. Now, Lexington is made up of uh, town meeting representatives. So there were only 200 people to worry about. 
However, residents in the town uh, had a method to either call in or send in questions that would be read from the floor. Um, the, according to the uh, one of the selectmen in, in uh, Lexington, who was very active in this process, he thought it went extremely well. He said, we've always had a practice of the three microphones, just like Westford does, for, against, and questions in the middle. He set it up on, uh, electronically so that people could line up between one of those three microphones um, and pose their question. He thought it went very well, uh, better than they ever expected. Uh, now, that was only approved I think it was in very early June by Governor Baker, uh, June of 2020, by Governor Baker, specifically due to COVID. So I'm not sure where Lexington is at this point. Uh, it sounds like they were hoping to continue that, that process. Just to remind everyone, um, uh, Patty Doobie sent out to us uh, the official count at the special town meeting on October 16th was 225 people. Now, uh, you've probably heard me say it before, we've got 25,000 residents approximately and approximately 17,000 registered voters. And we ended up with 225 uh, people to, to make the, the quorum of 200. Um, I think Angela can bear me out with this. We actually had to wait about 15 or 20 minutes uh, and, and beg people to come in. <laughs> I think we even brought in some of the safety people from the ambulances and the fire trucks to sign in so that we would have a quorum. Um, that's not a good situation. Uh, I thought it was a great town meeting. I think it was over in probably less than an hour once we get started. Um, but uh, I would like to see a lot more attendance, whether that's in person or virtual. Um, I think that's about where we are right now. Uh, I was going to pipe in before and say that um, you know, to the remote participation group, uh, we certainly won't have any final determinations in February. I'm not sure that we'll have them in uh, 2022. However, we'd be happy to, to put together a, uh, a summary of where we are for the selectmen if we meet with them on the second or, or fourth Tuesday of February. Right, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're building a lot of ideas that are concrete, but it certainly seems yes. like things we're talking about have a long path to fruition. Exactly. Okay, that's great. Valerie, the, um, the link that you sent out, what community was that um, that had a, uh, a uh, hybrid meeting? I think you said, did. Was, was it that Lexington? I thought it was an R. Reading. Yeah. Was it Reading? Maybe. If, I don't. If it wasn't. Don't. If it wasn't yesterday, I. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it happening. Yeah. I, I think I remember the email. It was Reading, and and I've tried to look up a number of those, and uh, uh, I know that uh, Angela sent out the um, Mass Moderators Association link, and uh, that's a huge uh, site. And I've gotten through part of it, but uh, I think they they might have even mentioned Reading, North Andover is another one. Yeah, uh, I I did listen to whatever link in whatever town it was, Valerie. I did listen. I I did go to YouTube and, and track it down, and I I did listen. I didn't see their representative government also, so they're not open town meeting. Um, I did not see uh, a number of people in in the uh, seats in in the school they were in. So it was half virtual, and it was mostly virtual. I'd, I'd probably say ninety percent of, of um, the representatives were virtual, and there were very few people at all that that they, at least they showed in the audience in the school. And that one went very smoothly, but it was mostly virtual. Um, and I thought it would be um, hard to follow, uh, but it wasn't. Uh, there wasn't a lot of back in a lot of back and forth, and and maybe that's the case. You guys may know better with representative town meeting. It certainly does, didn't feel as if it was one of our town meetings where you where you'd get ten people back and forth up at the mic. 
Um, there might have been one or two comments from representatives, and that's it. Uh, so it wasn't very dynamic. Um, good comments made, but not, not nearly as dynamic as ours or maybe another town meeting. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, the only other point that I wanted to make <clears throat> was that um, Angela had uh, brought it up to the uh, Board of Selectmen about the clicker investigation, uh, saying that this group recommended that we do some further investigation on the use of clickers. And um, yeah, I was there, uh, Angela, I tried to give you some support <laughs> and spoke out for the group. And uh, I, I just think it's a great idea. Uh, as I mentioned to the selectmen, this was maybe one of the first things that if we can, if we can put this in place, people would begin to get the idea that these things are changing and the electronic virtual world is coming. So I think the use of clickers is an excellent idea. And we're gonna talk about that at, further down on, on the agenda. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's on, that's on the agenda to, to talk about. Any other questions for Tom or Eric or Steve about um, the remote participation group? Christina. Um, Tom, those towns that use ballots, are they Massachusetts towns with open town meeting? No, uh, I think what I've found so far, it's, oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes, uh, the, the town of uh, Salem, New Hampshire, has an open town meeting, but they also use ballots. I don't have all the details yet. Um, I tried to log in and uh, they restrict uh, getting ballots or sample ballots to residents. So I my daughter lives there, so I will, hopefully she can get one for me. It, but, is uh, that something that we can do in Massachusetts or, or would there need to be changes? I think there would need to be changes. And Steve and Eric and I have talked about that uh, we will need to investigate the laws and figure out what needs to change, as I suspect a lot of other towns are doing right now. Uh, Eric is taking point on, uh, is from his legal expertise, taking point on uh, starting to research the laws and what would have to happen in order to make that happen. Okay, I think most of the towns that I've looked at are representative forms of government, but uh, Salem is an open town meeting. Steve? Does that answer, Christina? Uh, and and uh, one thing that um, I've been getting more excited about, kind of the, the idea that I like the most, I think, at this point, that we've ex been exploring is this idea of having the ballot um, after town meeting. And uh, uh, Angela actually came to the studio and did a podcast with me a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things she mentioned, I think, after the, the camera stopped rolling uh, right. was that I think it was North Andover, you said, uh, does uh, a ballot election a month after town meeting. And that month becomes like a campaign month for all of the groups that have a Warren article or something that they care about. Uh, and it kind of incentivizes all of those groups to try and get out the vote. And I really like that structure uh, just because it it kind of takes it away from all being on town officials to get people to go to the community or to, to go to town meeting. And it, it really gives uh, community organizations a little more of a stake in trying to get out the vote and drive people to participate. Um, so that's, that's something that has come up that I like a lot that I would like to pursue. And I, I do think that in Massachusetts, it will take some changes to the laws uh, to get something like that implemented, but that is certainly something that uh, we're exploring. And Angela, I, yes. I, I think it was North Andover, and I think they did it by home rule petition, if I'm not mistaken. I, I could be wrong, but I believe that's what they did. I don't know about North Andover, but I do know Andover is very progressive and is very active. Their, their League of Women Voters is extremely active. So we, Westford, you know, all, um, often reaches out to their league. Um, for examples and samples, or have you done this, or how have you done that, you know, um, a type of discussion. And they've always been committed. They've always been, you know, courteous and respond to us immediately. So it's good to have partners uh, in other communities that, that are, you know, kindred spirits thinking of the same challenges that, that we are. Anybody else? 
That was an excellent podcast, by the way, uh, or interview, I would have called it, uh, with Angela and Steve. And uh, I don't know how many people watch that, but I mean, I learned a lot. Just It was like a 23-minute uh, segment, and I thought it was a great segment. I hope Steve, a lot of people Steve look at made it. Me, Steve made me look really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, it, you know, I'm going to stick my neck out and say at some point in the future when we're a little more gelled, we could get several of us to, to do a podcast also on this committee. So I'll, I'll just leave that out there for now. Uh, but probably would be a good idea to get uh, some visibility as to what the group is doing also. Uh, I, had, I had hoped Megan would be able to join us. I didn't get a chance to ask her um, if she's made any progress on the branding end of things. But from a visibility end and the communication end, it would be good to keep the uh, momentum up, you know? Okay. Next on our list is Christina for the Community Data Collection Working Group. Uh, so we met a few weeks ago and generated some questions that we wanted to ask other open town meeting towns to see if they're having any better luck with um, participation. So we sent out a link to a Google um, form that we were hoping to send out to other towns so that we can gather some of that information. Um, and I'm just going to bring it up for myself so I can kind of look at it. I don't know if anyone has had a chance to, to take a look at it. Um, I did. <laughs> okay. Um, we were trying to make it sort of quick, but just asking kind of logistic type of schedule and location things, which month and day and time is, is your town meeting? Um, is it always consistent? Is it always on a weekend, always on a weekday, things like that? Do you uh, want to share your screen, Christina, if it's up? I, yeah, let me do that. We don't have to dwell necessarily on every, but you know. All right, let's see. All right. Let's see, now I can't see anything. So are you guys seeing? Yep. Are you guys seeing it? Okay. So here's the Google form. Like I said, just a little quick introduction that we're trying to um, gather some data, what town they're from, the schedule and the location of their annual town meeting, um, you know, which month it's in, which day, time of day, um, is it consistent every year, where is it held, if they hold special town meetings, there's another little short section for them to fill out. Um, and then trying to get attendance information as far as how many people have attended over the last um, five or six years, just so that we can kind of see what their attendance is like. Um, and if they feel that it represents the demographics of their town, um, special accommodations that they may or may not offer, The, and then we went into um, how do they inform residents about when town meeting is um, listed. We listed some options that they could check off. Um, and then this question is a little more specifically about the um, issues on the warrant, not just time, date, location of, of town meeting, but the actual um, warrant articles. Um, and then some other things about meeting specifics as far as limiting the time, if they provide any sort of frequently asked questions, um, if there are articles um, posted online ahead of town meeting. I saw that Acton, and I don't know if this was just for the past um, their past annual town meeting or if they always do this, but they had all of the presentations posted two weeks before town meeting with a contact name for each article. So if people had questions, they could they could do their own research and then they could contact that person for questions. And I thought it was really interesting that as I watched their town meeting, um, not one person got up there and asked a question. They were making statements. Really? And they seemed very well informed. So I, I don't know if that always happens. It was the only act in town meeting I, I had ever watched, but I thought it was really interesting that not one person asked a question. They were all making pro and con sort of statements. 
so maybe there's something to yeah. that. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe they do a better job of, um, getting that information out. I don't know. Um, so the rest of this is just kind of other information about what they do. Do they try to attract people and then sort of a free form of, you know, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us? Um, I'm going to stop sharing this unless anyone wants, has a question about the survey. I can't see everyone. So you're okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, Sally, I think has a question. Yeah. Um, up near the very top, and I think it was section two, you ask a question that says, is it consistent? And when I was looking through this, I was wondering, you only allow one option for people to pick the month and the day, but you then ask, is it consistently on that month and day? People just might have trouble answering that, I was thinking, if their day and and month change regularly. Oh, you know I think you can select more than one of these. I'll, I'll double check. Oh, good. Okay. I, I, All right. Well, let's see. Can I do it now? Yeah. See, I don't know if this is going to do this because I'm the editor, but I, I meant to make it so that you could select more than one of those options. So I'll, I'll double check. And the same okay. with the day. Oh yeah. I think it was just the day that I couldn't, I was testing out your thing. Oh, you and one of them, I couldn't make multiple selections for. Oh, good. Okay. All right. I will. Um, yeah. I'm going to definitely need some people to test it out because I, I just sort of threw it together. And when I come in here, I think I see something different than other people will. So it mm -hmm. was difficult for me to test. And Christine, are all the, are all the questions and, and well, the answers required fields to be entered? Um, so I, I did make all of them required, I think, except for obviously special town meeting in case they don't have that. Um, so, and then my next question, if they are, is, um, it, it, is that, what if people don't, don't have an answer or really could care less about answering it? Are we turning off some people? Would we, be only, you know? we, we certainly could be. So I'm definitely, op <laughs> yeah, we're open to that, open to that feedback. Steve. Well, so sort of to that point, um, I took the, the survey today, um, and I got to section four and I kind of went, oof, this is going to take some research. Uh, and it, it took me about 15 or 20 minutes to go and look up all the numbers and get through it. And, and like, not all of the town meeting minutes mentioned the number of, of attendees. So some of, I had to go on, on like, there was a vote count during the meeting and that's what I, yes. I entered. And, and so I guess my suggestion on that page would just be to not necessarily make all of those mandatory in order to continue. Um, if, yeah. if somebody is just not in a position to fill that all out, <laughs> um, then, yeah. then I, I kind of feel like we shouldn't shut them down from getting to the end of the survey just because they don't have a half an hour to go look up yeah. town meeting numbers. Yeah. Very um, good and, point. I, I had the same difficulty finding, um, the numbers myself for Westford. So I ended up emailing Patty Doobie and she helped <laughs> me out. <laughs> Uh, and I can also confirm that the um, on the earlier on section two, the one that you was, were saying you should be able to check multiple uh, months. I I did notice that those were radio boxes, and I I checked multiple. And I, at the first, I didn't understand why that wasn't. I thought about it for a second. All right, it, it makes sense. Um, but so I can confirm that yes, that does work. Okay, thanks. So we have our technical input on on this call. So, Christina is. It, who who is the intended audience? Who are you sending it to? Did did you say that part and I missed it? Um, so we were hoping to send it through Angela to the moderators, um, and Angela has her hand up, so I would love to hear if, <laughs> if that is going to be a possibility. Yeah. So um, many people may not have seen the email I sent late today. I um, solicited the. Uh, Mass Moderators Association and finally got to the president. She finally answered me today. <laughs> and um, so she's going to bring it up at the executive board meeting on December 4th with the caveat in her email, which I forwarded to everybody. Um, the Mass Moderators Association doesn't usually like to do surveying for outside groups. So, you know, I can try and convince them we're not an outside group. We're an inside group, <laughs> but, but that's just, that's just what she said. I was started thinking about it after I got that email and another, um, 
another thing you might do with this is select a good uh, group of towns that um, are similar to Westford and then just try to get the appropriate person in each town to answer the survey, whether that be through the town manager's office or probably more likely through the clerk's office because the clerks are all interested in this too, or directly through the moderator in that town, which, which might be... Okay. Yeah, you, we, because you can find all the moderators on on the websites of each town. So if you know which towns you're looking for, you can you can find them. So you know we, I'm still working on trying to get MMA to do it. But if they don't, we should probably have some backup thoughts going on. Sure. We, we we do have a um, a list of towns that we came up with that we thought would be similar to Westford. First of all, you know, open town meeting. Um, roughly the same size or at least close, you know, we kind of, we kind of narrowed down some. So we, we do have a list that we could, I guess, divvy up and, and try to get this information. Yeah. You know, when you're doing, as you all know, I'm sure when you're doing something like that, a personal phone call to the clerk's office saying, we're trying to find out this information. Do you think you could fill this out for us? We don't want to waste too much of your time. It's a short survey. Can you possibly do it? That'll, that'll get you somewhere really well. I do agree with Steve though, the, the, um, if I was taking this survey and didn't love everyone on this committee, as I do, I would get to that part that said how many people were at the last five town meetings and say, okay, I don't have time for this. <laughs> because I don't know well, I would have to get Patty and, and I wouldn't want to bother Patty. I wouldn't want to say, Patty, can you look this up for me? So, so I know I wonder about that, that part. I, I have two other little things, if I could just say them quickly. So sure. where you ask about the time, um, right after the month and day, it says time, morning, afternoon, evening, other. It should really say start time because our meeting starts in the morning and goes to the <laughs> late afternoon, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes. So I think it just should say start time. And then I had, oh, yeah. The other thing is um, the, that question do you feel the attendees of ATM generally reflect the population and demographics of your town? I just wonder how valid that answer is going to be. You're just going to get the opinion of the individual who's answering that question. And, and how will we evaluate whether that opinion is, is a valid, you know? substantial, I don't mean substantial, just a factually correct opinion, mm -hmm. because whether the town meeting reflects the demographics of the town requires that you have a pretty good understanding of what the demographics are and are also looking at that at town, at every town meeting. I just, I, I I'm, I, I just wonder if that's a, that, that's a question we should ask this. I'm not saying we shouldn't find out, but I'm just not sure we're going to get that information by putting it in this survey. And, and I totally agree. Um, yeah. it, we don't have that information in our own town. I, I right. was asking right. Patty and, you know, there's, there's sort of no way to, there's no way to get that information. I mean, not easily. No, <laughs> not easily. Right. It would be hard to get right. Um, I'm sorry, one more little thing. What type of seating is offered for voters? <laughs> I would say folding chairs instead of plastic folding chairs. <laughs> they could be metal folding chairs. They could be wood folding chairs. <laughs> and either way, they're uncomfortable. So I would just say folding chairs. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> okay, thanks. Valerie, do you have something else? Yeah, you're just going to... Um the the question about like asking someone to type in the exact attendance for the last five years it sounds like you're really trying to tell well or maybe you can tell me if this is right or not but like maybe it's more helpful to just ask them like are you just passing quorum or did you have a lot right like giving them mm -hmm. some way to like kind of um, ballpark it instead of like digging as Steve did digging through past minutes to find that information. It, it's, I, I imagine you're trying to gauge, you know, are, are people readily attending or are you struggling for attendance? Right. So finding yeah. a, a different way to word that to just, um, and, and kind of similar to the representative representation, um, question 
to Angela's point, maybe there's a way to word it like, do you feel like all age groups are represented are represented at your town meeting? Do you feel like, you know, something like that that lets them just um, answer kind of more objectively? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 we sort of thought that would be a difficult one. Um, but as far as the numbers, we were sort of, we were trying to get at, you know, how good is your attendance? Because I, so I, when I went back and asked Patty for, um, all of the numbers, as far as, you know, how many people attended town meeting, I was really shocked to find out that. So since 2015, um, our average attendance is 3.25% of the registered voters. So, you know, on a really good day, we're getting 3% of the people at annual town meeting. And that's including um, 2017, where we had the teacher override, where a lot of people showed up. Right. That was, that was 6.75%. So I, the percentages are, are, are sort of low. And I guess it was just a way to um, kind of orient ourselves you know, what number, what kind of numbers are we talking about? And maybe what are some other, what are some other towns getting? Are they around that two to 3% also, or is somebody getting five and 6%? Maybe that's the question, Christina. What, what percent maybe. of your registered voters attend town meeting? Yep. Maybe that's a better, you know, Angela has her hand up. Yeah, can can you not not share your screen, Christina, so we can see yeah, everybody? Yeah, I can. Now? Okay. Thank you. There we go. Um, so two things. Again, what percentage of voters attend your voters attend town meeting just requires a little research, and and it it, it might stop some people in their tracks, and they'll say, I I don't know, I'm, and then they stop <laughs> answering your survey. On the other hand, if you want to get that information. Maybe, again, you can divvy it up among a few people who can call the town clerks in various towns and say what percentage of mm -hmm. your voters attend. Um, and the other thing is, uh, when if you do have occasion to look at the email I sent out today, Tom, it's like what you were talking about from mass moderators before. They have this huge amount of information. And the president sent me all these articles and references, and yeah. I started reading through them. And one of the things, one of the very interesting things was that um, attendance at town meeting, which we all think of as so abysmal, it is abysmal, there's no two ways about it, but is not much worse than attendance than, than voters when they go to the ballot box for strictly town issues. So it's just something interesting to keep in mind that, you know, <laughs> it's not just town meeting. There's, there's an apathy that, is sort of across the board for local issues. Well, so it's interesting that you say that, Angela, because I also got those numbers from, from Patty. Yeah. And our average, again, over that same time period is 13% oh, um, in, in, local, in local elections. Um, so, and, that, and there's a range between 11% up to 24%. Mm. Well, that's much, different years. much higher, much, much higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but still, 13% is still pretty low participation. Yes, but it's not 3%. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Christina, is Concord one of the towns you're looking at? Um, let me... Or could be looking at? I, I don't remember. Let me, um, let me try to bring that up while we're talking so I can um, grab our list. Concord, uh, yes. Concord was was one of the communities that did have a age break, an age breakdown. I think you and I had spoken about this. Um, they haven't they haven't done it for probably four or five years now. But when I was initially doing some research, they actually had an age breakdown every by uh, by ten years of who attended town meeting. So it was either town meeting or who voted. I'm not sure in town elections. I thought it was town meeting. I could be mistaken. But with it went a lot of effort and a lot of work and, you know, 
But if someone ends up talking to Concord anyway, you might want to poke at that. Okay. okay um, so I think from here, we'll, we'll try to figure out whether we can actually send this through Angela to the, to the moderator association or not. Um, we're going to, we're going to plan another meeting and, and, you know, maybe we'll start doing some of the research on our, on our own, especially for the numbers, for the numbers of attendees. Maybe we can try to get that and just remove that question completely from the survey. Cause you're right. It's, we hesitated putting something like that in because we didn't want to scare people off, but we sort of wanted to figure out who had high numbers <laughs> and who should we be listening to maybe who was, who was figuring this out. So I don't really have anything else unless anyone has questions. Christina, uh, I just I just wanted to mention that uh, I'm not sure what the attendance was back in 15 and 16. I went through that um, your survey and I quickly realized that in order for us to follow your link and go through the survey, you have to answer all the questions, uh, which was fine. Um, I, I did not know how long the survey was, and I kept wondering that, although I think I did finally see I was on like section four out of seven. Okay. So if, you know, if people see that, at least they'll know they're coming to the end. Okay. Uh, the only other comment was going to be um, in, in the June annual town meeting, uh, I believe we had just made the quorum because in the afternoon, we only had 187 people left. But even if we make a quorum of 200 out of 17,000, we're down to 1.1% of the registered voters. I know 2017 was a huge year with the teachers. And, and I, I personally had a, a, a warrant article, uh, which was controversial. So it did bring out a lot of people. But unless there's something really con uh, controversial, uh, yeah, I think you're down around the quorum, which is about 1.1%. Yeah. I think so. Okay, it's already eight o'clock. And just just to check with everybody, we haven't. We're about two thirds through, and, and that's about it. People okay with time? Okay, so we'll plug away. Okay, Valerie, I think you're up next for your group. Um, we uh, most we started by we couldn't find a good time to meet, so we shared a Google Doc um, and had. I had, I had looked at, um, three other towns who had done recently done surveys, um, Acton resident surveys, Acton, Linfield and Southboro that I found from Googling. Um, and so I sort of like condensed all of their types of questions into one, um, summary. And then we all sort of weighed in on the, um, benefits and how to approach the different questions. Um, sorry, let me just check my notes for a second. Um, so a lot of the other surveys that other towns did focused a lot on what we were calling like the fixes. So that you would either have the residents kind of ranking their preferred month and day, um, or weighing in on different like major changes to the town meeting format, like what time should it start or should we be limiting um, time limits for comments and questions and presentations. Um, a lot of places we're looking at um, lowering the quorum requirements. And we kind of debated that as a group about whether to um, open, open up the idea of fixes and to this wider group that we're trying to survey from. Um, cause we hope as many residents as we can get would fill this out. And it seemed like we all sort of agreed to just kind of get a feel from residents on what's broken. And then if we get a really good data set on what's broken, we, this group as kind of who stepped forward as like, would be the ones who can look at this data set and try to recommend the fixes instead of having you know, 500 people fill out a survey with what works just for them, right? Where, um, what month is kind of maybe special for them. Um, we thought that it might be better to kind of flip that and just get information on what is broken right now, if that makes sense. So that's kind of how we've approached it. 
Um, we also included some demographic questions just, just to get a feel for whether our survey is reaching all the different pockets of town um, because we want to make sure that our survey is, is representing the town. And we were very cognizant of keeping it as short as possible because we really do want people to breeze through this without any um, holdup whatsoever. So I think it's like five questions. You want to bring it up, Valerie? Because I know oh. I sent it out really late. So I don't know. I'm sure most people haven't had a chance to look at it. Yep. But I apologize for that. One second while I figure out my screen. Okay. Um, so it breaks into a couple different branches based on the first question, which is I attend annual slash special town meeting almost always, sometimes, rarely, and never. Um, so if you answered almost always or sometimes, you get dumped into a section about um, what kinds of things do you still find challenging about attending town meeting? We thought that that was really important to ask even for the people who are showing up, right? Because you might even negotiate something in your personal life to make it happen, but there's still something in your way. Um, and then we really wanted to find out where people are hearing about the people who are attending town meeting, um, where are they hearing about it? And a lot of these, to the points that have come up in the earlier survey discussion, I'll, I don't think I have anything that's required. Oh, maybe the first question is just required to answer. And then almost everything is um, choose all that apply so that you can choose multiple answers. Um, so where do you hear about town meeting? We tried to list as much as, as many things as we could think of, including Tom's favorite outdoor banner by the library. <laughs> um, and then we just left it an open text answer question for what would make town meeting more convenient. If you answered, um, rarely or never, you get dumped into a different bucket that says that kind of the same questions, but words it as what keeps you from attending town meeting. And it's a lot of it is the same type of um, questions, but we also decided to add not a US citizen, not a registered voter or under 18 years of old, eight, under 18 years old. So we could get a feel for who might be filling out our survey, who is interested, but falls into some of those buckets. Um, and then instead of where do you, you know, hear about town meeting, we just wanted to find out where do you learn about town events or issues? Um, so those type of buckets, local news, Facebook, word of mouth, school communications, town communications, Westford Academy ghostwriter, Twitter, Instagram, or in-person bulletin boards. And then an open text of what would make it more likely for you to attend town meeting. Um, and then at the end, we saved the demographic uh, questions for last, age, gender, and um, like a race ethnicity question. And again, that comes out to be about five questions. And we also talked briefly about, um, I know Diane and I, you and I, you and I had talked about this when we were coming up to the fall town meeting um, of like, what's the trade-off of marketing something like this as with like the town seal on it, right. Or something. And I thought there was a lot of benefit to marketing this or, or promoting this as, you know, like we're your neighbors. We are just a group of residents who care so much about town meeting <laughs> that we are meeting monthly at night to talk about it. And we really want you, yes, you to fill out this five question survey, you know, not like this is something um, you know, from the town manager or from the town clerk or something. This is or from the town moderator. <laughs> <laughs> this is people just like you, you know, who, you know, your neighbor who wants to know why you're not attending, attending town meeting, no judgment. So we, t we did speak a little bit about how to promote it and market it that way. Um, we haven't really gone into next steps of, oops, sorry, forgot I was sharing. 
um, we haven't really gotten into next steps of um, where and when and kind of the logistics of sharing it. Um, I did have a thought a couple weeks ago when Patty Doobie was presenting to the select board about some census mailing and whether it would make sense. Cause I think one of the other towns that I investigated, um, they had sent it to every resident in a, along with like a town, um, mailing. I, it was, I don't know if it was like a water bill or if it was a census mailing or something like that. Um, and Patty had some restrictions on, you know, it could only be one page cause then it will bump up the mailing cost. But even her, um, even her town sanctioned printout, she had like trimmed back to only be one page because of cost. So, and she does it to like 10,000 residents. So I didn't know if that's, if the cost of printing a one page survey to mail out with her official mailing, um, would be cost prohibitive for this group. So we didn't pull on that thread any further, but we did certainly talk about what places in town we would kind of have some printout copies available and the place to stick it in like Cameron senior center, maybe Rodenbush, the library town hall. Um, and then certainly electronically pushing it out however we can. Did I miss anything? Um, I, I just have a couple of comments about your last questions um, about demographics. Uh, and I didn't, you went through that toward the end and I missed. Um, oh, sorry. That's okay. But do you say, do you position it? Or what if people feel uncomfortable answering those questions? That was the only, I want to be sensitive to asking for their race, asking for their age. Although, although we'd like to have it, um, it, and it's important to know who's attending. I think we need to balance, you know? Yep. So we, I mean, we talked about having, you know, at the top, it would say something like, tell us about yourself. We want our survey to be representative of our entire community. And this, these questions will tell us if our survey has reached all the groups that reside in Westford. Um, but then each breakdown has prefer not to say as a, as an answer. So if you got to the end and didn't want to share your age, we hope that you would still, you know, submit your question, you submit your, um, survey, you know, so that we get the data, but your age is not a deal breaker. Okay, cool. Input. Did people get a chance to see it, by the way? Sorry, did I go too fast? I no, no, I didn't send it out until, you know, late yesterday, I think. So we would love any feedback. So yeah. yeah. I've um I, I went through it and I, I I thought it was great. Um you did a really lovely job, Valerie. I think I may have to uh, ask you some Google form <laughs> tips because I, I am not that familiar with it. But um, the only thing I thought is, um, and I got this from the DEI committee because I saw their survey recently, and I liked the definitions of certain terms that the DEI committee used in their survey. I don't know if anyone saw it. And I'm sort of thinking that you may need to define town meeting. Um, because I've heard people refer to town meeting as select board meetings. And I don't, I'm just curious. I just, I'm not a hundred percent sure that when you say town meeting, people instinctually know, everybody knows that we're talking about annual town meeting in the spring. Um, so I, you, you may want to just put a little definition Thanks. Yeah. If you just called that annual town meeting, would that suffice? You know, honestly, I, I would clarify it with mm -hmm. the meeting that's usually held in the spring bubble. Like I would just put a short little description just to make sure I, I have heard it so many times people say town meeting and they're actually talking about a select board meeting or they're talking about planning See board, that. or they're talking yeah. about... I, so I don't think people are, are as familiar with the terms as this group is. Dana. 
almost wonder if that could be worked into the questions again to try to get feedback from residents like do you know what town meeting is <laughs> i don't know maybe and maybe see people say like yes no because again if we just give the definition then maybe that kind of falls into the not giving a fixed category but like providing the information where we're trying to get the information from the residents what do they know what do they not know I'm also sure that that Christina, when when you're hearing or seeing that it's small t, when people are referring to it, it's a town meeting, and the it's a town meeting, right? It's a, the select board being one of those town meetings in my mind. So, sometimes, and then sometimes not. Um, okay. So that's that's why I thought. But I sort of like Dana's idea of, um, you know, maybe asking, do you, do you know what this is? Have you heard of it before? <laughs> Wouldn't hurt, probably. Others. Steve, I'm going to oh, randomly yeah. call on randomly call on people. We need everybody's input, so it's important. So I, I've I've definitely run into some of that confusion about like capital T town meetings versus lowercase T town meetings. Um, I think that's all good, and and maybe asking. Or helping helping people to define what what we're talking about would be a good idea. Uh, I also wanted to say I I do like the framing of this as coming from your neighbors uh, mm -hmm. rather than coming from like official town town government. Um, I feel like the, we are kind of running run into a society level problem here where people are are not so eager to engage with government. And by framing this as like, hey, we're just your neighbors trying to figure this out. Uh, you know, really at the end of the day, that's what local government is. It's not left versus right. It's we're all neighbors. We're trying to figure out how to make the town run. Um, and I, I think anything that we can do to seem a little bit more informal um, in the way that we gather, gather data and kind of interface with the community, I think is, is going to work to our benefit. Uh, so I, I think that's a really good way to frame, um, frame the survey. Well said. Linda. Well, first of all, I want to congratulate all the committees. They've done a wonderful job putting the um, information together, the surveys together. And, and um, the, the surveys are so intertwined. Um, and we're all looking for basically the, the same information. Um, so I think that it's, it's the sooner we can reach out to our audiences, um, the better for our, for us going forward. Um, I think, it, you know, I'm helping with the, the towns and getting the information from the towns. And, and I love the idea of, you know, reaching out to the town clerks personally, or even going to, you know, their local libraries and finding out the information from their, their annual reports, um, as far as attendance and information and so forth is, is, can be gathered. So, um, you know, I think we're all on the right track and, um, I'm really proud to be a member of the committee. Excellent. Stephanie, I haven't heard from you. <laughs> um, so, you know, I've worked with um, Valerie and the rest of the group on the, the resident. I agree with Linda that a lot of the, especially the community data collection and the resident survey, there's a little bit of intertwining what we're trying to gather. Um, and, I, you know, I, I think the sooner we can get the data, the, bet, the sooner we can get recommendations out as to what we can be doing in, in February. Thank you. Anybody else? Angela. Um, yeah, I, th I think both of these are great. I think um, somebody else said it, but I'm just gonna repeat it. It's nice to have up front when you get this in your inbox. This is a short survey. We expect it to take six minutes. <laughs> this is a seven question survey. We expect it to take six minutes. I look at that stuff before I start something. If it says 20 minutes, I'm like, okay, forget it. I'm not doing it. 88 questions, not for me. <laughs> so I would suggest both, both surveys have that. And the other thing is, Valerie, um, this 
So the difference is one is going to be really targeted to a specific group of, of people that we want to get information from the moderators or the, or the you know, town officials. And the other one we want to have broadcast to as wide a number of right. people in Westford as possible, voters, non-voters, whatever. So right. the one that we want to broadcast, I think it would be a good idea to get it out there in as many ways as possible. And I would not be discouraged from trying to use one of some of the town mailings. There, there are ways, definitely ways to do that. Like the cultural council does it sometimes. The, the tax bill, you're allowed to put certain things in there. The, um, the water bill, I'm, I'm not sure about the water bill. I know the tax bill um, and, and any other mailing that's going out. I, I wouldn't be discouraged you know, it might cost some money. The very first time we have to ask for money for something, the, the question is how important is it for people to vote in this community? How important is it? What is the monetary value of getting as many people as possible to vote on the important issues in this community? I think it's a great argument. And I think if we need funding, we'll get it. I mean, not millions of dollars, but I think if we need a few hundred bucks to do a printing, I don't think that should be an issue. I mean, I'd be very discouraged if that was an issue. So um, I would encourage you to use as many outlets as possible. You're probably going to get more responses electronically than anything else, because that's where people are now is online. And, and so figuring out how to get it out there, maybe through the schools or, you know, through the stuff that comes from town hall electronically as, as many outlets as you can to get this. And Tom, you probably have some information about that having just participated in the um, survey, surveying of the community for the uh, uh, drive up windows. And yeah, another town survey that recently happened was the climate action survey. They, they've just taken a, a survey from town. So they might have some ideas on how to get it out there as well. Good. Yeah, I'm not sure, Angela, how we got to so many residents, but we got um, almost, uh, I think it was 1,695 responses. Uh, Bob Schaffer worked on that along with um, Mike, Mike Wells. And somehow or other, they blanketed the town and got 16, uh, almost 1,700 responses. We need to up that number. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> You can do it. Yeah. Put our heads together. Christina. Uh, so as far as getting stuff into the tax bill, um, the Recycling Commission has done that on various occasions. Mm -hmm. And I want to say we spent, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars because you just have to get that sheet of paper copied. And at one point, I think think the town may have done that for us, but we provided the paper or something like that. Um, so it shouldn't be that expensive, but it, it goes out. There, it's like a December date, like the next one's coming up. So it's a short window. I would, I would ask Patty Doobie when she needs that stuff by so that it can get, um, stuffed into the envelopes. It's mailed on January 1st for for the um, second half of the fiscal year, the first bill is due February 1st and it's mailed on January 1st. Okay. Yeah. And I, I just remember that there was like a December date in there as far as getting our information in so that they could get it into the um, envelopes and stuff. So would this piece of paper have just have the link on it? Is that Val? Is that what we're thinking? Um, I, like I said, I don't, I don't think we've really had some good just in-depth discussions of what's okay. next, yeah. but um when in our preliminary discussions, we definitely talked about how having a paper option is helpful. Um, I guess if it's sent to all these homes, do they really follow through and drop it off or? Right, and that's, that's um, where my mind is going. How do you then tabulate so, and, and get that information if it's hard copied? I think it would definitely have a link on it, but for people who would prefer to fill it out, I, I, I guess, we could only hope that if you choose to physically fill out the paper, you also would physically drop it off somewhere. And, and we could set up multiple drop-offs. You could have town hall, you could have the library, but will people do it? So, you know, right. setting, setting that framework, I think is easy, but expecting, you know, uh, voters to, to do that, you know, 
Some maybe. But if you're sending it out with the tax bill, what do they have to do with their tax bill? Send it back with the money or pay it. I don't know if they if that is doable, but I wonder if they couldn't just stick it in the envelope with the tax bill or drop it. Or we could you could say something like drop it when drop it off across the hall when you pay your tax bill or drop it off when you pay your tax bill. I like that one. Someone's gonna have to fill me in on the option for physically paying your bills because <laughs> I have no. Yeah. You just you go to the oh, window. No, you go to the window and you bring right money right. and they I, take it. I don't know. <laughs> is that is that like the that that old theory about a bank teller? Is there a person? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I got nothing. And it's right opposite to Patty's Patty's office. The top, it's right opposite. You so you turn around and. Oh. So that's a great idea, I think. <laughs> you know. Stephanie. Yeah, so um, I believe if you escrow, if you're if you have a mortgage on your house, typically the I know for me, like my taxes are escrowed, so I don't even pay the tax bill. The mortgage company does. Oh. So I would say there's probably a majority of the town where they don't actually physically have to deliver the check to town. It automatically is happening. So. Hmm. It's not going to be every, it's going to be a smaller percentage of, of the respondents. But, you know, I, I think if someone get, takes the time to fill out the survey, they'll take the time to drop it off because obviously they felt value in filling it out, right? True, true. Christina? The, uh, the census has to get returned. There's always that census form that comes in, in, this, in this next tax bill. So maybe we could use that. Okay, I'll follow up with Patty. Yeah, I, I think there may be various options. Um, I think the the deadlines and the window, as well as any additional cost, are going to be the two factors that you know uh, will will impact. Anybody else? Steve. Um, so just for me personally, uh, the the tax bill stuffers are not that effective. My my mailbox is full of action direct and or globe direct and action limited and all just full of junk. Um, and one one thing that I find is that I, I sometimes lose the excise, excise tax bills on my car because they slip into one of those and then they make their way into the recycling and I don't get the bill until the second time they send it to me. Um, and and. So I really would would like for the town to offer an electronic option. Like I'll give you my email address. And if you want to send me the tax bill online and I'll click on the link right there in the email, like that would be a so much better way to do it for me at least. Um, but I, I think there are, uh, there, there is a, a a bunch of people in town who are, are not necessarily going to be reached by that tax stuffer. And I, I've been thinking about a lot lately, like how, what's the best way for the town to communicate with people and get information out to people. And the thing that is like glaring missing in my opinion is, is some sort of electronic communication that you can get official postings and like town meeting warrants that have them sent to your inbox instead of having them printed, save some of that paper. Um, mm. And I, I feel like, I don't, I don't know that this committee is the right committee to set all that up or think about all that. I don't know if it's within our scope, but certainly maybe like if we could make a recommendation to the select board to have the communications <laughs> advisory committee or somebody look into the issue of just communicating with residents and, and setting up kind of a more effective line of communication that people can sign up for as a kind of like a, a one-stop shop to get all the really important stuff in town. So, so coincidentally enough, CAC is, maybe you already know this from the minutes, Communication Advisory Committee is looking into this and actually meeting with department heads to start to see how they communicate with the community. Uh, so that is with Mike Wells and Bob Rafferty and Steve Spooler um, on their goals of, uh, of starting that process. Because I think, you know, we all acknowledge there is a, there isn't a consistent method uh, method to reach everybody in town, so they just they're looking at that. Christina, you had your hand raised. 
Well, so um, Steve, I mean, you can sign up for emails um, through the town on their, like, you know, for their news flashes. I, I don't think the town uses it as effectively or as often as they probably should, but so there is sort of a mechanism. It just, maybe it's not used as, as much as it should be. I don't know if it's communicated as well either. Yeah, this is the that first I've heard too. of it. Like I, I know about the, the mailing lists for all the agendas and all that kind of stuff. I know the, the town manager's um, uh, newsletter, but I, I'm, I'm looking for specifically like if the town has official documents that they want to send me, if they want me to, to take an action like paying my taxes, um, it would be a lot more effective to send me an email than to send me snail mail. Yeah, so I don't think that they send those kinds of things through it, but there is, and I'll look it up, um, there is another, like, I think it's Newsflash or <laughs> something that you can sign up for. I'll have to yeah. look into that. And that that's a push rather than a pull, right? So unless you know it's there, you don't know to go get it and look into it. So it's the chicken and the egg, right? Okay, any other questions for Christina? Okay, moving, moving along. Um, we've got the, uh, it's now 8.22 or 8.32, go ahead. 8.32, we're, we're a little over. Uh, discuss the next steps from the letter from the League of Women Voters about the meeting banner. Did people get a chance to um, read the letter? Did people see the letter? <laughs> I should... Stephanie, Valerie, okay. Others? So real, real summary, League of Women Voters sent, uh, sent out a letter to all of you. Um, asking that as part of this committee, uh, we recommend to the select board that the town pick up the costs and, and the effort and maintenance associated with that um, banner that, that we hang over uh, in front of um, First Parish. Eric. Uh, oh, I absolutely saw the letter. I, I just forgot who, where it came from, but now that you've refreshed <laughs> my recollection. But yes, the, the instant I saw that, I mean, I was only a, a tenth of the way through. I'm like, why isn't that something that is, you know, funded right. and actively championed by the town? Why do we even have to ask? You know, uh, so I, I feel very strongly that that, you know, we should get a brand new banner every year. There should be 10 of them. It shouldn't be only one spot in town where they're hung up. You know, so I'm very, very pro the town should be paying for this. It's, it's easy. It's simple. And it's going to reach a heck of a lot of people very, very quickly if they're better and more banners. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Others. I actually was wondering the effectiveness of the banner versus like the yard signs. To me, the y yard signs in various places at that eye level catches me more than the overhead banner in my, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. So if, I mean, I don't know what the trade-off and cost is, right? The yard signs might need to be updated with dates every so often too, but um, at least you don't need someone to hang it, I guess. So the league, the league does have both, um, obviously manages and, and pays for the banner, uh, for both, uh, town meetings and for election. And they also, uh, have yard signs for special town meeting, annual town meeting and for elections, but every year it becomes a budget issue, uh, depending on the weather and how damaged they get. Uh, et, et cetera. And slowly but surely, we've been trying to replenish the, those signs that uh, are in poor condition. Uh, but it has, it has been, you know, a how many can we do this year? What do you think? Um, you know, uh, check with some other vendors. Can we, can we collaborate with some other leagues and see what they get for pricing? So it, it, it becomes a little more complicated, you know? Um, does anybody else have anything to say? Valerie, sorry. I just wanted to clarify. I think my point was that to, to, to maybe find a way to um, articulate the value of each of those and only pursue one of them or 
like to, to p- potentially drop the banner and just pr- pursue yard signs. I think that's the point I was trying to make. Okay. Sally. I think I saw in that email, it can cost up to a thousand dollars for each banner and then $300 to hang it. I also mm-hmm. agree for that money, the yard signs, like a really a lot of yard signs out in people's yards would be far more effective for that price. If that's really the cost, um, uh, there's people who avoid that intersection because, you know, it's horrible to drive through, <laughs> I'm at the library almost every day and I'll go out of my way to avoid that intersection. Yeah. Um, so I don't know that that is the most effective way if that's really the cost. That's so the, the, ban- the banners do run about a thousand and uh, we, we um, have them modified at printing solutions, you know, down the street. So depending on uh, changes in time and, and date, there are some modifications needed. The biggest challenge, however, has been the hanging of the banners. And that's, that's evolved over, over years. Uh, and we used to have um, a landscaping company in town, and I just went blank on the name. Uh, and who, who Bill. also, do, somebody says, no, not Bill, it's someone in Westford. Um, and I'm embarrassed. I just, just forgot, um, the name and they do, they do a lot of work with the town. He does a lot of work with the town and Scott's. Hmm? Scott's. Yes. Thank you. Scott's, um, Scott, um, in any event, uh, two years ago, he, he told the league, um, we, we were told that they could no longer put, put them up. I don't know if it was a liability or a time or, or resources. So then we started scrambling and then we would, it, there's a whole drama, you know, uh, regarding this. So cutting to the chase, uh, we just need to figure out as, as Sally, you know, just put on the table and Valerie, you did do pros and cons of more si- investment in more signs or investment in, in the banner and what, what people, what the majority of us think. Angela, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, much like the, um, uh, survey, different people are hit by things in different ways. And um, some people are going to see those eye level signs and some people are going to see the banner. And so ideally you want to do as many different things as possible to get as many people to see what you want seen. The the cost does seem um, high to me. I I know that um, in the last few years with political campaigns, we've found that, um, the costs of getting things done online and having them shipped to you is often much, much cheaper than having, I I may hate to say this, but having a small local place do it. I I mean, if it's, if it's between not having it done or at all, or having it done at at some big place like Staples or someplace like that. Um, So I think maybe the thing to do, um, is to really get a better handle on on the cost before um, deciding. Because if we if you're going to decide tonight, are are we going to decide on the basis of the cost being fourteen hundred bucks? Because that is a lot of money. I agree. That, that's for a brand new banner. So that that is not to to modify what we have today. And and so how long does a banner last? A number of years, probably five or six years. Okay. Well, that's much. So there better. is there is some longevity with it. It's not uh, the the um, yard signs wouldn't. I don't think, depending on what they're made of, you know, may not last as long as that. But there is some, you know, um, duration and longevity with the with the heavy duty banners that we've gotten in the past. It's changing the date and any modification that that may be needed. Okay. So. So maybe we think about this a little more. Um, the the question of so so if we decide that the banner is not um, uh, it, it is that visibility and value for more signs is better than the banner. 
uh, the question still goes back, the request still goes back to the town picking up the tab. And the effort associated with uh, changing, and we, would, we probably could even change the dates on the banner, we could negotiate with them. The effort associated with the banner, effort, not cost, is much less than if any effort associated with those signs. Because with the signs, then you have to have you have to have a place to store them. So who's going to store them, and who who's, who in town is going to put them out? Do we ask facilities to do? I mean, does the town ask facilities to do that? So it it becomes a little more complicated, and just need to think that through. And, and they're not even all on town property, right? Right. The signs. So right. you have to get permission first. Then if, you have to if, put them out. Yes. And if you the have town to did pick it, them right. up. And then they have to be stored, just like political signs. It, right. There is quite a bit of effort involved. So it's it, the effort and time resource um, are quite different. In addition to maybe the, the, I'm sure the cost, depending on which how many you get associated with it. So um, maybe it's something we think through a little more. Uh, and and send me any specific thoughts that you have, since I know it's getting late too. Uh, and we'll revisit this in December, unless people have another suggestion or want to make a call right this minute. Linda. We've always just hung the one banner right on Main Street there. Is there a reason for that? Is there a reason we don't have them in all over town? The reason we don't have more than one is cost. Okay. Cost and effort. So the cost of the banner, who is going to hang it? And is there a price with anybody? Are we going to have to pay anybody to hang it? As I said, when Scott's landscaping put him up, he didn't charge us. So we we only had to pay for any modifications to the, to the banner itself. Mm -hmm. And so we dealt with um, printing solutions, you know, trusted partner down the street. Um, and that worked out well. And then things play, uh, you know, went by the wayside. We were also given a little pushback about from from the town about the liability associated with just anybody putting them up, and maybe we shouldn't be putting them on um, any utility poles because National Grid doesn't doesn't think it's a great idea. So it became fairly complicated, and we'd like to streamline all of that and have the, have the town do it. But I think the league is willing to negotiate or at least partner partner with us to figure out the best approach to do this. So. I, I just feel like I have to say that the Boy Scouts put a banner up. Pancake Breakfast has a banner up for Apple Blossom. There's usually a banner up for, at Christmas time for the, the thing that goes on at the high school. So I don't, I don't think the town could really legitimately say there's a liability issue. So we don't want a banner up encouraging people to vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really yeah. a little, I mean, the cost and, and who's going to do it or something else again, but, but the right. liability issue, I think that they're, that ship has sailed. Yeah. I was not in the middle quite candidly until with, on, on that discussion. So I, I'm, you know, a little, a little removed, but I was involved initially in in storing the banner and working with Scotts and getting it up. So that that much I can tell you. You know. Okay, so we'll agree that we'll. Um, uh, Tom, sorry. Yeah, just a quick comment. Um, some people don't even notice the banner up there. Um, it, I, I think it's people that go through town every day. There are so many different banners that. It just doesn't even register. When I saw all the signs up there for the for the graduates from Westford Academy all the way around the common, <laughs> I heard so many comments about those signs. It, they were great, and people noticed them. And you know, it, I mean, if we were worried about putting um, the eye level signs on people's property, uh, you know, maybe we ought to consider just lining the common with signs about town meeting coming up. Just an option. Mm -hmm. A good one, you know. Any other comments? Sorry, just one more thing. I just 
playing off what Tom said, you know, that that could resolve a lot of issues with the signs if they were all on town property. So if you had them at each of the school entrances and around the common sure. and the library and town hall and the Parkerville schoolhouse and the Cameron Senior Center, you're, you would be distributing them all out of, over town and you'd eliminate the, um, you would really eliminate the permission issue you would probably eliminate the storage issue because each place could just be responsible for taking it in and putting it back out when it's appropriate. And you would eliminate that, that issue of who's going to do it too. That might, that, that that's that like a really good idea. Yeah. So the private property signs from the league, the league's private property signs, I can tell you are fairly limited. There, there are no more than probably 10 people, uh, 10 members who have signs on their own property. Mm -hmm. the, the bulk of, of those signs are on town property. So most recently, the, the league got approval to put them on islands, in all the islands in town. So that was new this, this past year. Prior to that, they were, they, you know, for some reason were, were not thrilled about signs going up on the islands. So now we're putting them on islands. And the other signs go up in, in front of public buildings. So just as you described, Angela. So there aren't, for the league signs at least, not a high number of private, private property signs. Mm. You know, it only makes sense if you're on a, on a main drag like we are. So I have one on my property, um, but we're, we're on a, 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 you know, a visible road. So, you know, on the side streets, it doesn't make too much difference. No one, you know, not many people are going to see it. Okay, well, table, I'm sorry. <laughs> Next. Yes, Stephanie. Yeah, so, I mean, so, so, if, I mean, so, um, I share the Apple Blossom uh, event, and I will say as far as storage of the sign, they don't take up a lot of, of space. I probably have 30 Apple Blossom signs and frames in my basement stacked. Um, so I, you know, I don't think that's as big an issue to store. Um, and and it, I think it's probably easier if if, it, if they're all stored in one place and so they all go out together at the same time, rather than having ones at every single location, it just, it's, you know, for, for, for us, it was easier to go put out all the signs and take them all back down and we have so, control of them. So what are you, what are you suggesting, Stephanie? I, I don't think I followed a banner so, or individual signs. Well, I'm specifically talking about the yard signs, um, you know, whether we whether there's a banner and the yard signs, I I do know there. I mean, when there's a new banner up in the center of town, I do notice it. Um, but I also notice yard signs. So I think different people notice different things. So <laughs> there is some value in doing both. Okay, so I'll mull that over. <clears throat> we'll we'll regroup because <clears throat> we go. You know, if, if we make a recommendation, uh, I guess we we could go after both and, and negotiate how many or how often. Um, but there are there are a few challenges just to work through, and um, you know, how do we get the most visibility? Okay, um, it's getting a little late, so Angela, we'll we'll move to update on voting. T if everybody is everybody okay with time. Mm -hmm. We're just about wrapping up. Um, update on voting tabulation devices, aka clickers. I can I can do do that really quickly. I'm I'm just in the information gathering stage. I'm getting stuff together about what towns uh, do it and what information they base their decisions on. And um, I, I I think I've got what what was out there within the last uh, few years. And I just want to update uh, for the last two years and. And then I can sort of synthesize it and and get it to you guys, unless someone else wants to read all through it. <laughs> also, <laughs> don't see any raised hands. I'll just go through it and, and give you a synopsis. <laughs> so Angela and I had talked about this previously, and, and I think this was even brought up at, at the select board meeting that um, implement uh, investigation. We recommended. And agreed that we would that the town should investigate 
But unless something's changed, Angela, I heard that from, and we all agreed at least, that uh, it does not fall directly under the venue of this committee, right? That will participate, um, you'll get input from, but it's not under the scope of this committee right now. So um, we'll continue along, I think to, you know, continue along the three working groups that we have, get the branding done and then contribute um, to Angela's effort on, on clickers, but not necessarily lead it, I think. If I, if I understood correctly, Angela. <laughs> You're on, you're on mute. You're on mute. Okay. I'm fine with that. I think, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, now we can. I'm fine with that. I think you guys have plenty to do, but I don't want to step on your toes either. If, if you feel like you want to participate or, or want me to participate with you in doing this, just let me know. But I'm, I'm forging ahead no matter what um, to at least get the information together and then um, hopefully come to a conclusion myself and present that to you guys and see what you think about it. I, I value the input. So we can figure out how we contribute the best way for all of us efficiently to help. Right. In, in addition to everything else, you know, uh, people are doing, and maybe we'll just work through that somehow and have a voice in, 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 in helping to, to mold it a little more, um, you know, from, from where you are. Okay, any other comments? I know it's late. We're way over what we thought we were going to be. Um, again, all my, ty my typos for the next meeting. Next meeting is not the 15th, it's December 14th. And two things, uh, one to ensure that we have quorum. Does everybody think, I, I know it's a month away, does everybody think that they'll be able to make a December 14th meeting? So, okay, some people prefer not to meet in December or July or whatever, whatever so, month it is. Diane, that, yeah. unless things change, that is when Jody is going to be presenting the budget to the select board. So I definitely will not be able to make this meeting. I, I'll have to attend that one on okay. that date. Okay, duly noted. Anybody else have a conflict on, on that date? So that would knock me out as well. That would knock you out as well. Well, we, we could also, um, Christina, since you're leading one of the working groups here, we could move it up a day or not. Does that complicate life more for everybody or not? Angela's checking her calendar. Can we move it to the 7th? The 2nd? 7th. Oh, 7th. Seven. Seven. I was thinking a day or two earlier to give people enough time to work because the second the second's like in... Two two and a half weeks. The seven. 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 <laughs> yeah, which is about what three three and a half weeks, three, three and a half weeks. Angela's checking her calendar. What what day of the week is this is seventh is this right? The previous Tuesday. Is that a select board meeting? Yeah. Is that no? No. Angela. It probably, it probably would be if it follows their schedule, right? Because they meet next Tuesday, the 23rd. Yes. So it would be a meeting. Don't I don't think meet? it is because the 14th no. is. is yeah. They generally meet on the, on the second and fourth second Tuesday. Oh, I'm sorry. November. Yeah, I'm looking at the town good. calendar right okay. now, and they are on the 14th, not the 7th. Okay. Okay. So, so would you like to do that? Are we good? For the 7th, December 7th. I'm out for the first Tuesday of the month. Who, who just said that? Valerie. 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 This is Eric. The 7th is fine by me. Okay. Maybe we could, maybe a doodle poll for December. I didn't want to make this overly complicated. <laughs> um. Yes, you know, if people really want to do a doodle poll, we can do a doodle poll. 
um, is is the day before the keeping it that week, the day before, the day after, like the fourteenth or the sixteenth. I'm sorry, the the fifteenth or the fourteenth. <clears throat> I'm okay on the 13th, but not the 15th. Like another... And I would say, yeah, I would say not the 15th. That's a conflict for me. I can't yeah. do the 15th either. One more time, the 13th. It's looking good, uh, Steve Ziffy, but we're looking good mostly. Linda? No. Stephanie? 13th works for me. Okay, it sounds like we're going to be out no, no matter what. So I would rather move it out a week and get another solid week of you guys working on your teams to make some more progress. So let's go with the 13th. Okay, anything else before we wrap up? Luckily, we need six for a quorum. So um, I, I don't. I think moving forward, um, moving forward, we should be fine. Okay. Any other questions? Have a great Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah. Happy Thanks Thanksgiving, for all effort, everybody. Motion to adjourn. Good night. Mm -hmm. Good night. Oh, oh second to adjourn. I don't appreciate it. I appreciate that motion. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>